Right. So the players, by the way, can absolutely launch themselves into a game before you get there, which is totally fine. What they're going to see is the landing page. Um, so they now, in this case, John is also a GM, um, so he can go wherever. But the players generally cannot move themselves around. But John, you can already see there's a lot more going on here than there would be if you were a player. Yeah, noticeably, I'm seeing across the top. There's a special page icon. Um, yes. It looks like some other little things are different for this. Yeah. And there's more stuff in my tabs. So yes. More stuff. Exactly. So we're going to do a quick um, summary of what we're looking at here. First of all, down here, we've got our players and their names and their little avatars. Up here in the top right, there's this gear, which is going to be our general settings for how this, just our view functions of things. Um, your display name, you can certainly change. Uh, Use advanced keyboard sh shortcuts. Yes. John, you're going to love those. I'm I guarantee you. You're going to love them so much that when you're playing and you're not the GM, you're going to be using them and they're not going to work and you're going to be very upset. <laughs> so just letting you know, they're so useful. Um, background chat beep is great. Uh, I turn off enable advanced dice. Yeah, um, they're, they're the worst. It just it's a graphical representation of dice that is just I don't find useful in any way shape or form it's cute for about 10 seconds then it's annoying um I get rid of the chat avatars don't need them no, I um, got them, sure. yep and I do like animated graphics and all that stuff but down here okay there's so the player video advertise are I just go names only and look at that down here you can see we're names only it just takes up space on the screen and i just i don't need it there and to be clear, clear uh, usually when we're playing we are on zoom while we're playing the game uh, here so we're not using the in-game chat or video at all we are using zoom as a separate service for the, the players correct and um i strongly recommend that i i think for some time uh, the built-in video was the way to go with this because video conferencing hadn't gotten to where it is now. It is not uh, Zoom quality by any stretch of the imagination. So I just do this, none. And as the GM, you are setting this for everybody because most players don't have these, these sections down here. Yeah. And when you do that, it will reload that page for you because mm -hmm. uh, it, it just needs to kind of reboot itself. So going back into there, um, I've turned off the chat tech to none. And that's really all you need. Cool. Um, so let's talk about what some of our icons are here. And let's start with the top right. These icons are icons that the players will see quite a few of as well. At least three of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this is the chat window. So this window that we're looking at here is our chat window. Um, we can talk to each other like this. This is a message for everyone. And that will pop up and that nice blue color means it's for everybody. There you go. Now let's say I just wanted to say something to you. I do a little slash W, that's the whisper and a space. And then any letter I type, there will be a bunch of names that can come up. I'm just gonna hit John, that's gonna go to you. This is just for you. And you can see that that's in yellow. Yellow is the uh, universal, you're whispering this color in Roll20, as well you should. Uh, whispering is super helpful. Uh, it's, it's the Roll20 equivalent of passing a note to one of the players. Um, so the chat window is also where all of the outputs are gonna happen from your actions, attacking, etc., casting spells. All that information will get piped over to the chat window. And the chat window, the said, that, be, that becomes like the log of what actually happened in it. So that's the thing you could actually export and sort of to roll back through and see what actually what happened in the game. Correct. Yes. And that, that will stay preserved from session to session uh, unless you specifically select uh, an option to delete it. And it is super helpful because I remember at one point recently, for some reason, your hit points got zeroed out and we didn't know why. And we rolled back and basically went through and said, okay, this is how many hit points you have based on what we saw in the chat windows. Very helpful. 
All right, our next icon, these little pictures here, this is gonna be your art library. And the art library, um, it, well, we're gonna get into that once we get onto a map level. Um, so let's hold off on that for a second. In fact, I'm gonna actually get into a map level just because I think a lot of the things will be more clear when we do so. Um, so this right here is our page toolbar. You tap that little page and down comes all of these. These are the pages of Strahd. Uh, spoiler alert. Now, they're all thumbnails here, so hopefully you're not, oh God, <laughs> sorry. I do this sometimes where I like, I scroll and it, um, it like the browser goes back yeah, a page. All the way back to the page, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'll be more careful so that that, that does not happen again. Um, so in looking at all those pages, um, I'll show you where you can figure out which page you're actually supposed to be on. But the important thing to know here is you can create a new page if you want. Mm -hmm. There is a random battle map. With, this yeah. is just the blank you know, world that you could drop somebody in. And um, there is then various locations. Now, I'm in random battle map. Uh, John, what are you seeing on your screen? Uh, I am also, I had randomly clicked random battle map, but I could go to, um, how about, I'm going to go to death house and see what, I think that's yeah, a great so looking, idea. Okay. So you're looking at death house right now. Yeah. Okay, good. Now I'm still looking at random battle map. Now you and I, as the GM, we can select any page we want, but the players will always be on the page that this bookmark is on. So if I want my players to be on the random battle map, I just click and drag it over to random battle map. Oh, great. And if I want my players to be on death house, I drag it over to death house. Right now my players are on death house. I'm on random battle map. So I'm also going to select death house and head on over to it. Um, spoiler alert, death house. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's a good, it's a, this is a good thing for us to pick because it's part of the Strahd campaign, but it's not, we're not spoiling very much here at all. It's, it's a we're house not. that you go into. Yeah. It's, it's literally designed to train new players um, to get them from level one to three so that they can then play the rest of the campaign effectively. And this is not the meat of Death House. There is another page that is the scarier part of Death House. So uh, if you're really concerned about blowing the uh, secrets of Death House, well, we apologize, but we're gonna be doing quite a bit of it, although not all of it. Um, remember that I told you that we set those um, defaults for all pages, but we can also adjust individual pages now as we desire because next to each page, there is another individual page settings uh, gear. And as you can see, it did carry over that the grid is enabled, as you can see, and the dynamic is, lighting is enabled with enforced line of sight. Restrict movement for whatever reason, not enabled. Don't understand why, <laughs> should be. So always worth checking um, to make sure that the settings are the way you want, because every now and then something funky happens as adjusted there. If restrict movement were not selected, characters could simply move through walls I don't know why that's not, <laughs> I don't know why unrestrict movement isn't something that you should be forced to select. Very strange to me, but- Maybe an, an all ghost campaign. Yeah, very strange. So I hit okay. So now um, that movement is restricted. Um, so then we're gonna get rid of our page toolbar because we don't need it. So Craig, I think I'm, I'm noticing here. So I'm looking at this map on the first floor of Death House and in the uh, bottom right-hand corner of this first floor, there's a T with a little square that's like at the trap door. Um, yep. And that's something that we are seeing on the GM's map, but they would, players would not see? That is correct. Um, and we're gonna talk about how layers function so that you can right. learn what players see and what players don't see. Um, and maybe we should start with that before we get into all these little fun things up here. Let's talk about layers. Um, well, we'll go top to bottom here, I suppose. Uh, the very first icon here on the left is something that everybody has, you and the players. Um, there's pan view and select move. Generally, you want that on select move. Panning through the map is just a, you know, two finger scrolling affair or a right click wheelie affair. I don't know how that works. Um, but you want it on pointer because that's how you're going to move objects around. But this next one, this is the big one. 
So Roll20 functions as a series of layers. There are four different layers. There is the map and background layer. Map and background is everything that the players are gonna see that is part of the graphics of the map that are never gonna be manipulated. So for instance, this, um, this stairway here is part of the map layer, obviously. You're not gonna need to do anything to it. You can, however, from time to time, put things on that you think should be part of the map, and you can then assign them to the map layer. Right now, we are in the most common layer, which is objects and tokens. Objects and tokens is the layer where you manipulate players, NPCs, things like that. So for instance, we scroll up to here, here's a specter. This is a token, which is an object, and we'll talk about what those are and how they function in a bit. But I can select it because it's part of the object layer, and I can move it, and I can send it over here, and I can send it over here. And when I select it, I also see some numbers. These are, and you can customize how these function, but generally speaking, green is gonna be the hit points, and blue is gonna be the armor class. Um, and we'll, we'll get deeper into tokens in a bit, but this is the layer you're gonna be on the most. And John, if you wanna be on the object layer, remember those advanced key commands? Oh yes, please. So I don't like having to go over here. Oh, it's too much, far too much. Down. O. <laughs> o, just simply the letter O will always get you to the object layer. Great. O. Um, then we have uh, the map and background layer. The map and background layer, I almost never use. Like I said, every now and then, like I'll read that, oh, in the middle of the room, there's a dead body. And for some reason, it's there isn't a dead body on the map. I'll find one in the art library, which I'll show you how to use in a bit. I'll put it down and then I'll send it to the map layer because I don't want it to be moved around. It's just part of the map. Yeah. Uh, avoid the map layer if you can. Map, by the way, map layer is M. Um, I want to get back to the object layer. I press O. And you can see as you go to the map layer, that specter gets grayed out because he's not movable. Mm. Actually, in this case, it is a she. She is not movable on the map layer. She's not part of it. So I'm gonna go back to object layer, now she is. The other thing you gotta watch out for the map layer, if you accidentally end up on the map layer and you start moving things around because you think you're moving an object, you may move a chunk of the map because sometimes the maps are actually in tiles. So just, you know, avoid the map layer in general. Then there is the uh, GM info overlay or GM uh, layer. That, um, the letter for that is K. Why is it K? I don't know, <laughs> but it's K. All right. Um, well, it should be K. Uh, why is it not K? Or is it? It is, it is K. Yeah, why isn't it working for me? It did work, it, it, it oh, switched it you. It worked, it did, you're right. K. Um, there we go, okay. So when you switch to the K layer, um, you're gonna have access to things that the players can't see. The K layer or the GM layer is incredibly valuable um, for all sorts of reasons. Uh, but the, the most important reason is it's where things go that you don't want them to see. Uh, on the K layer, um, you will, um, first of all, there are aspects um, that are baked into the K layer that aren't controllable, like for instance, um, right here, S and S, those are secret doors. The players will not see those S's, obviously. But you know that they're there. This is a great way to kind of move through. It's like, you know, in the, in the modules, there's the player map and there's the GM map. Mm -hmm. They're combined here. It's just that only you can see the things that are special. Yeah, so um, same way that they're not seeing the the uh, numbers for the different rooms. Correct, and they're also not seeing down here, for instance, like as you noted, there was that T. They don't see those things. Um, and so generally speaking, those red things, uh, red indicators like S's and T's and stuff like that, they're not seeing, and they're certainly not seeing the numbers. Um, 
and you can move back and forth, obviously, between the O and the K layer. Let's look at here, we've got this broom of animated attack. It's, as you can see, it's transparent because it's living on the K layer. It's not something that the players can see. Uh, what happens is they open that door and you describe the room and part of the room is that there's a broom in it, big deal. If they get too close to that broom, it comes alive, at which point you're gonna wanna move that thing from the K layer to the O layer. Hmm. Now, let's go to the K layer, we select it. A couple of ways to do this, but I'll show you the way that's the best. <laughs> um, in this little, uh, sorry, um, in this, uh, if you uh, sort of right, uh, like double click or right click, whatever that control click function is on yeah. the icon, you get all this stuff. Layer shows you what layer it lives on. Right now it lives on the GM layer. Well, we want it to be on the map layer, so we go map layer and voila, as you can see, it's now visible in a much more clear way. That's an indicator that the players can see it on the object level. Here's what's annoying. Try and select it. You can't because you're still on the K layer. Annoying. Okay. So you got to go back to the object layer. Now you can select it. Well, that stinks. Well, you should be able to select it. This is not on. I right. can't select it either. Hmm. Let's go to. Did I put it on the map layer? Oh, I put it on the map layer. See, I made a mistake. It's supposed to be on the token layer. Sorry. So now we go to the token layer. Now it's selectable in the token layer. So super annoying. I hate doing it this way. You can see why it's already messed up. Craig, um, could we stop for a second and let me try to move it from layer to layer to make sure I actually understand what's going on here? Yes. Although if you'd like, I can tell you the best way of moving it from layer to layer. Please so show me. Do what I can show you. Um, because uh, I'm going to show you how to move things from layer to layer with just the keyboard. Wow. And the magic letter that you're going to be using is M for move. Hmm. So um, in the case of this broom of animated attack, um, I'm going to move it to the, to, um, the K layer. Um, I believe it's on K layer. Oh, it's still an object layer. Uh, isn't that, is that working? Huh, hold on. That should be, oh, sorry, move is, so sorry, move is L. M is map, L is move. It's so annoying, I'm so sorry. It's, I have it by like um, muscle memory. <laughs> so, <laughs> L, K. So, L, um, is what's going to, you can think of that as, I guess, the word level or mm -hmm. layer. Layer. So L moves things. So if I have, and you're going to use, like, there are certain letter combinations. There are three letter combinations that you just get really used to. So if I have something living on the K layer that I want to be on the object layer, I'm going to hit K, select it. And then I'm going to basically type the word Lou, L-O-O. L tells me what level I'm sending it to. Uh, tells me I'm going to be sending it to a level. O tells me to send it to the object layer. And then another O gets me to the object layer so that I can do it. Great. If that makes sense. I think we're probably doing it at the same time. So there you go. L-O-O. -O. Um, if you want to try and do this yourself, see if you can send that to the... K layer. Uh, if you wanted to send it to the K layer and stay on the K layer, you would select it here in the O, you would be an O, you'd select it. And then you would say LKK. K. And now you are on the K level and you can select it. Um, sometimes I wanna send something, oh, like here's a great example. Uh, let's talk about, for instance, this specter over here, this mm -hmm. guy. Let's say I want that specter to turn invisible. They can actually do that, but let's say I wanted it to turn invisible. Uh, and, but then I want to be right back on the object layer. I'm just going to select it and I'm going to say LKO. LKO means send it to K and then let's come back to O. And just like that, LKO means it's invisible and then LO, it's back. 
Yeah, if I were doing the interface for this, I would make it a little more clear on the edges, like what layer you're in. It feels like there's that could potentially be confusing. I guess you get used to it. You do, but you're right. If there were some sort of outline, for instance, like here. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah, like um, in this area, if this changed color to let you know what level you were on or layer you were on rather, it would be helpful, but you do get used to it pretty quickly. Um, and so that's part of it. There's another trick I like to use um, when we get into um, initiative and tracking initiative. I always liked it when we were playing where we didn't quite know what the bad guy's initiative role was until their turn popped up. It was exciting. So for that, what I'll do is let's say, oh, you're going to be fighting the specter. And this is something I can prepare ahead of time. I'll just uh, command C that thing. I'll do a copy of the token itself and then just point my pointer somewhere else and command V. And now I have another specter that's floating out there, but that's not a real specter. Um, I'm going to send that guy to the K layer, which means no one will see him. Mm -hmm. But while he's on the K layer, I will add him to the initiative on the K layer. So he'll be in the initiative lineup and we'll see that when we do initiative, but you won't see it. And then when it's time, I will uh, move him to this layer. He's living in between, like where the specter is, is living in between <laughs> buildings. Yeah. So nobody's going to see him anyway, but now his initiative will become um, aware. Um, you will be aware of his initiative. Um, simple a uh, tool, by the way, that everybody should be aware of. When you click and hold on a spot, it pings something, which is incredibly useful to communicate mm -hmm. between players. Yep. So that's a very simple kind of layer. There's one other layer we should talk about, and that's the dynamic lighting layer. So John, I want you to just hit the comma. Well, look at that. Yeah. Voila. The comma sends us to the lighting layer, and the lighting layer is just the information about what your players can see through and what they can't see through. And basically, anything that is a barrier that is blue or orange, they cannot see through. Orange is always going to be a door. Uh, blue is a wall. So when your players get up to a door and they say, I want to open it, I very simply hit comma to send myself into this layer. And then I just, you see how my, mm -hmm. um, the, it turns into a little crosshatch. I just click and drag that. And I'll just drag that door into some place where it will not cause trouble. Great. And now that room is open and visible to the characters. So yeah, you just open the door. See, yeah. and if, you, if you want to shut it, you just drag it back and roughly drop it where it was. And now that nice. door is shut. And then to get back to my regular life, I just hit O. Um, you are never really ever going to move anything to the dynamic lighting layer, nor will you ever move anything from it. So the layers that you're going to be moving back and forth from all the time are K and O, using L to tell us where we're going. So L-O-O, L-K-O, <laughs> all those combinations you get really good at. So just to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, um, mm -hmm. The O layer is is all the objects. It's the things I need to move around that, and the yep. players could see those things that I'm moving around. The yep. K layer is a layer that's hidden from the players and it's where I'm yep. doing secret stuff that I don't want them to know about. Correct, that's exactly right. They cannot see anything, anything on the K layer at all. Um, <clears throat> you can even put a magical effect in place that you know you're gonna want somebody to cast mm -hmm. and put it on the K layer. Uh, it saves a lot of time because then if they show up um, and in fact the, the bad guy does cast that, you go to your K layer, just move it a little bit left or right, and then just transfer it to object, LOO, and now they can see it and just poof, there it is. Great. Saves time. So that's the layer stuff. And it is uh, the bulk of what you're going to be doing technologically as the DM. Um, but now I want to talk a little bit before we get into this other stuff about what these things even are. Um, so 
this is going to send us back up to here. I'm going to skip over this little art thing. I'm going to go to this newspaper. The newspaper is the journal icon. Everybody has one, including your players, but your players are going to have barely anything in there. What they're going to have under their newspaper icon is their own character. Uh, what you have as the DM is everything. Oh my God. <laughs> everything. Everything. So um, you're going to be wanting to find in this area. I mean, obviously this is all the reading material, um, which you can collapse down with the pluses and minuses in terms of chapters. Um, we are currently going to be in, in Death House. That actually, I think, is an appendix. So we're going to scroll all the way down. And there it is, Death House. Um, there's some introductory material. If you click on something, it'll pop up. And you can read the introduction to it. There is show to players. You probably don't want to be showing this all to players. <laughs> um, however, occasionally you will see handout. Handout's useful. If you click on a handout, it will just show an image. Um, these, you can type some notes in here just to yourself, but um, no one can see this image until you show to players. So if I hit show to players, it will give me a warning. I'll say, yeah, I want everyone to see this picture and it will pop up on their screen. Yeah. Uh, let's get rid of that. We don't need that. Um, what we do need is the, in one of these, there is going to be essentially the description of the actual room by room. This is going to be your Bible while you are DMing. And you can move this around anywhere. Um, depending on the size of your screen, you may have some limited space. Um, I find that I'm moving these things around all the time to clear them out of the way, but I do want them on the screen typically when I'm DMing so that I can refer back as I need to. Obviously, you need to know your material. Um, you don't want to be that DM who's like, oh, you've entered room 4A. And people are like, what? It's 4A. And you're like, oh, no, sorry. I didn't. There's no numbers. Uh, let's see. It's a kitchen. You want to read stuff ahead of time. Um, but this is pretty clunky to have on. Let's say we're in combat. I'm like, I don't need this now. Just double click the top of it and it will collapse down. And I will usually have some row of these things up at the top of stuff that I know I'm going to need. And then when it's time, I just pop it open. It goes right back to where it was. And I can scroll through and read descriptions. Um, sometimes you're going to get to a spot like, say, 15A, where there is a bad guy. And they will always make a link out of that. And if you click that, you will get this business. Um, again, you can show this to players, although I believe it shows all of this stuff to players, which you don't want to do. You can show them a handout, um, or you can just show them a better view of the token. The token, I'm going to double click this one so it collapses down. The token is basically the mini. That's what it is. And you can always show any token to all the players by selecting it and then holding shift and then hitting Z. And that will pop up the token in a large view and send it to all the players so they can get a better look at it. Any player at any time can select a token uh, that is selectable by them and just hit Z and that will make it large just for them. But you can send it to everybody with shift Z. There you go. You sent it to right. me. Well done. All right. And they can click, you know, you click anywhere else on the screen and it goes away. Um, the, so the token is the mini. In any of these bad guy things, as the DM, you are, you are all characters except for the player characters, and you kind of have to know the player characters too. Um, there's a general description here. I usually just don't bother with bio and info or attributes and abilities, which is the gobbledygook guts version of these things. I go to character sheet because that's what I'm used to. And the character sheet is going to give you just standard stat block, right? This is just, you know, you can organize it like this or like this. Um, just like the monster manual. Uh, very handy to just have that collapse down as well if you know that you're going to be fighting a specter. And when it's time to fight, oh, John, um, where are you? Are you um, in the, uh, the journal tab on your... Um, I am. 
go ahead and hit the letter C. And now you're in chat. Chat. Great. Yeah. So does so, J take me back? J is journal. C is character. Chat. C is, uh, uh, no, C is chat. C is chat. Sorry. Yep. J is journal. Uh, I will get you to your compendium. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, I really don't know what the other ones are because I'm constantly moving back and forth between C and J, to be honest with you. C and J constantly. Um, so my specter has all sorts of things he can do. But the lovely thing about this system is, whereas before, as the DM, you would say, okay, his life drain, so I got to roll a D20, add four to it, and then if it hits, I got to roll 3D6, and then da-da-da, or I can just click life drain. And you will see on the, the, the bottom right, and again, for whatever reason, it did not take the, uh, the settings that I wanted it to, so I'll fix that in a second, but you can see it's got the two numbers, right? 16 and 22. If it had advantage, it would take the 22. If it had disadvantage, it would take the 16. On a regular roll, it takes the one to the left, 16. And then it all it automatically calculates the damage for you and gives you the, the important other stuff that you need to share with your, um, with your players. Now, so, but in doing that attack roll, it's, I'm not saying that this specter is trying to attack this character who has this AC. That's still a thing you have to know, right? Right, I need to know who he's attacking. Or and she. So if let's say Spectre on Spectre Crime, it's the worst kind. It is. Uh, it's a Spectre fight. Um, so this Spectre here is going to attack this Spectre here. Yeah. So I go, okay, you, Spectre, um, you're going to do your life dream. So I do it again. And it was an 11. Now I go to this Spectre and I'm like, oof, AC of 12, that does not hit. Okay. If it had, Holy cajoli, that's almost max damage. Nice job, me. Okay. Um, annoyingly, again, I should point out um, that this specter um, is, is not whisper rolling. It's blue. It's rolling to everybody. It shouldn't be like that. There's a way to fix it. I've, I've had this issue with just Strahd. I don't know what it is about Strahd mm. specifically. I have not had this problem in another campaign. So uh, there are ways to fix that, but Apologies, everyone is seeing these rolls right now. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's keep talking about tokens and characters. We don't have any players right now, um, and we want to have some. So, let's see. Should we make um, should we make a couple of players? 